one week later. Leon. Yes. I, uh... I suppose I'm probably skulking around the uh, nearby area, seeing what's going on. Seeing if there's actually a, a, a meeting going on. Uh, this meeting... People have actually already started showing up. It is currently sunrise, and people were arriving before sunrise. So, you were probably awoken by the sound of cars driving down the path. Well, I suppose there's no time like the present to uh, probably unsettle the poor individuals who are traveling to this meeting as uh, the man in riot gear <laughs> with a shield and a sh emerges out of the woods. There is some disturbance that that creates. However, it is very quickly calmed down by the same man from before. He kind of raises his hands and he's like, Be calm, my children. He is an honored guest, though. And he does give you a very pointed look, Leon. I do need to request that you do keep the shield and firearm outside of the establishment. I'm sure you can understand. This is, as you very well know, a religious congregation. Very well. I can... I can, uh, comply by that. I, I just hope that my own foes don't, uh, stop by in the meantime. He kind of chuckles. Whatever foe that you may face is nothing compared to the Sun Wolf Apollo. Let me put your mind at ease. I, uh, I suppose I'm gonna comply with this and I will leave my, my shield and my blade and gun uh, by the somewhere. I don't, probably not like at the front door. They have an umbrella rack. Just put them in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where is the armor, Rick? <laughs> and much uh, to his credit, as soon as you place your items wherever it is you decide to place them, he does kind of stand guard and anybody that gives it sort of an eye, you know, he ushers them to keep moving. He doesn't let anybody even go anywhere near it until everybody's inside, and then he closes the door behind himself, obviously not taking it. And with that, a, a very long ceremony begins. It starts right at sunrise and goes up until noon. Leon, you are honestly incredibly bored by all of this. Most likely. It's probably not as grand as, you know, summer courts rituals. Or not as, uh, fun. <laughs> it's not nearly as violent, no. However, things do start to pick up when... The man that has been presiding over this claps his hands and the doors behind you open up and two members come dragging in. And she looks to be a female in her late teens, bound and gagged. Followed shortly by another young man, probably the same age range, bound and gagged. Huh. Yeah, Leon's not going to really know what to think of this other than, well, I am in a cult after all. <laughs> he brings his hands out. Brothers and sisters, let us retire to the antechamber. 
And he, he points at one of the individuals. Make sure to bring the holy implements. We must make sure to do this right. For the hour is at hand. With that, everybody else rises and begins to move back into the back of the building. <clears throat> it isn't until you do so that the four individuals and their captives follow. Everybody makes their way into the room that had the large old school padlock which seems to lead down a staircase leading into what looks to be a large unfinished basement type area three individuals bring up the rear or, sorry it would be five individuals the two with their prisoner the four with their prisoners and then one man who has a distinctive looking tablecloth wrapped around something. You remember this tablecloth. This is from the room that had the very secure lock that Ram was very gracious in opening for you. Instantly, I might have. This room is, as stated, an unfinished basement. The only thing that is of note is a large steel door on the other side. And two slabs of stone, which these two individuals are forced down on. Leon is, you know, assessing the situation here and is, you know, even if I wanted to do something, I'm not sure I could. So, uh, he's gonna play along, perhaps a bit hesitantly. Well, as they are forced down onto these slabs, the very ugly man that has been presided presiding over the sermon gestures actually for Leon to come forward oh great I'm gonna get shot in the back of the head that's my thoughts I will um I will go forward uh, making just kind of you know glancing around the room trying to gauge everyone's reaction here they all have a bit of confusion on their face. But not any sort of upset or excitement. They're just confused. He re the man stretches out his hands. We have an honored guest amongst us. I speak for the Sun Wolf. The Sun Wolf has demanded his presence in the Most Holy with me. So, the proceedings are to go according to plan. And at this point, he you notice that he also has a piece of gold red fabric draped over his arm. And it's at this time that he kind of, he lifts it up and he puts it around your shoulders and it's a rather regal looking robe. So, we will retire and go directly to the site of the Sun Wolf. Proceed to commence with the blood sacrifice. And he turns you around and begins to walk arm over your shoulder as he's walking with you down towards the large doors at the end. 
the squelching sound of people being stabbed behind you does not need a perception check. Is this a clarity roll already? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. As he opens the door, he kind of pushes you in. Do you wish to resist that push? I, I mean, obviously. I'm going to try to keep my footing. I mean, he's not he's not pushing you in such a way as to knock you down. He's pushing you in of... before him. OK, yeah, then I guess I will go in. What is in the room? <laughs> well, the door slams shut immediately behind you. He does not follow you in. Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> All right. This is where the nerve gas comes in. I'm dead. The only thing in this room is a raised dais in the middle of the ground where a pulsating orb of fire suddenly bursts forth. And a snarling okay. sound is heard as tendrils of what look, look like liquid fire emerge from this orb. You are before the Sun Wolf Apollo. Speak your business, child of fire. You defended my holy ground. Okay, well, I don't suppose there's uh, any point in being, um, uh, beating around the bush here, so I'm gonna immediately drop, uh, my mask here. Ah, uh, honesty. Yes, I shall do the same. This orb and tendrils shifts into that of a wolf made of liquid fire. I was not entirely sure what I was getting into here, but I had my intentions in mind. And I know not what realm you hail from. I know not what your desires or purposes truly are. But I fight a war of my own, and I come seeking allies. Allies you will have in me, but I do need one thing in return. speak these rooms and it lowers its head and kind of uses its nose to point at the dais that it sits on are a binding fetish I tire of these servants you shall have what you seek in me should a cracking of this fetish happen, I will devour those that have put this here. And you shall have the ally you seek. Okay. What do I... So... What, what, I, what is it that I'm supposed to break here? It's just kind of like a raised platform? It seems like, as you kind of look at this raised platform, there is runic symboling all around it. 
you're unable to read it, but it definitely looks like it's some sort of language. Okay. Um, what's it made out of? Stone. Stone, okay. That makes things a little more difficult. <clears throat> what do I have that can break stone? I don't know if it could break stone, but it could be symbolic, and I could turn on Helios' judgment and hurl a bolt of sunlight at it, but I don't know if that's going to break it. <laughs> okay, very, very fine. Then uh, I will raise, it, raise an arm and sort of... I guess from the light emanating from this guy, kind of coalesce it into a single bolt. And, uh, if this is what you want, very well. And, uh, chuck it at the floor at these rooms. With a very, very loud, thunderous, sound you hear stone split it doesn't seem like the bolt shattered it but there is a very visible crack running through the dais immediately the doors opened up behind you what have you done as the man comes bum rushing you before you're even able to move a muscle this wolf bounds off of the dais and where that man once stood is nothing not even ash the screaming coming from the next chamber echoes I am gonna need a clarity roll here of <laughs> yeah a five uh, yeah <laughs> um touchstones it's a minus two then from t t having two touchstones correct yes okay Please lo roll your weird. Did I not? Okay, I mean, I'll roll my weird. I thought I just didn't. Okay, but there you go. Or maybe I'm just really far behind on the rolls. I just got a roll um, for th a roll for three with zero successes. So I was was assuming yes, that was uh, five minus two. Yeah, so you didn't succeed, so you need to roll your weird for yeah, weird okay. damage. I, I were rolled weird at uh, zero. Okay. Two for zero. Seven and a one. All right. You don't take any clarity damage for this. <laughs> I probably really should. Um, but, um... Moments ooh. later, there's silence. And a at the top of the stairs, this wolf of pure sunlight stands, looking down at you. You have your ally. You are not one of the individuals I normally deal with. What exactly are you? That's an excellent question. I am a human who has uh, been tied to a realm of... I'm gonna pause there and try to try to just think, think, how do I describe what Arcadia is to Sunwolf here? 
um, a realm of uh, dreams, desires, emotions against my will, and I have escaped said realm and returned here. I am not without being pursued, however. At this, roll me a perception check. Oh boy, luckily I've been buffing my wits and composure the entire campaign. <laughs> and I failed. <laughs> you hear nothing, but you still notice the wolf's ears turn back. And he speaks. Come to the top of the stairs with me. Well, I've gone too far to say no now, all right? So um, I will make my way towards the stairs, and as I'm walking through this chamber, make just kind of looking around, seeing if there's anyone, anything left of anyone here. The only thing that exists in once you reach the top of the stairs is... A room that almost looks like it's been melted a little bit. This cavern has very clearly been melted to an extent. No bodies, not even a speck of blood. Okay, that's... However, it is at this point that you become painfully aware of the clicking of metal against stone. As the Huntsman comes down the far side staircase across from you. Well, um, to battle, my friends. <laughs> um, the wolf the, the puts wolf? itself. The wolf puts itself in between you and the Huntsman. It give. It looks at you one last time. I can only exist in this realm for a short period of time. The solar event wanes. This will be my final act for this solar event. Our deal is in place, but I want to make sure my servant survives to be able to, per to continue the work that I want you to do. And with that, it lunges forward directly at the Huntsman. It fades away as it passes through the Huntsman. Who kind of stands there for a moment. As the metal melts off of it. Soon, a individual. Pale skin long black dreadlocks piercing verdant green eyes St very well muscular individual stands before you completely naked at this point that did not go as planned Oh, whoa, is the little hunter out of his iron now? Are we fighting on fair grounds again? Am I still holding the <laughs> the sunlight beam? Mm, that one, you didn't necessarily say you were, so... Okay, well then... He pauses for a moment and he goes, Well, any fight or conversation we were going to have... Seems to have me at a disadvantage, as I don't seem to have clothing at this moment. Well, uh, no time like the present to murder a man. But uh, I am still disarmed, so I need another contract. And I am, unfortunately, not... Well, 
I have glamour now because I just ate all my goblin fruit, but is the huntsman like turning <clears throat> to leave or is he still just kind of standing there atop the now smoldering iron puddle? Uh, there was no there's actually no smoldering iron what it, the amount of heat that that wolf seemed to have hit it with evaporated. evaporated iron vapor that can't be good for the lungs <laughs> <laughs> smoker's lung nah, nah I got on <laughs> <laughs> um however I do have one parting gift for you. He raises his hand and snaps his fingers. Slowly raising out of the ground is the loyalist. Again. Uh, how many times are you going to throw this poor pup at me? Oh. He's had an upgrade. And as he raises his head, you notice a very, very thick black band around his eyes and what seems to be scarring down his cheeks. Okay, well, it looks like I'm going to be fighting here again. Unless, so, okay, I'm going to ask at a game here, do you want me to start prepping contracts for fighting, or because I feel like we're going to run out of time for everyone else if we do another combat? Somebody seems to forget that finales are two hours. They're normally two hours. Finale episodes are two hours. But three hours. So yeah, three, okay. Uh, well then, uh, no time like the present to die. With that, um, the Huntsman. Now this would be a very, very boring fight, and he manifests his spear in his hand. <laughs> and he grabs some of the cloth that is part of that loyalist armor and begins to wrap it tying it tightly, and tosses you his spear. You what, you expect me to use your toys? You don't seem to have a weapon, and this would be hardly sporting if you didn't. I am an activating elemental weapon, and I'm going to make a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the stone. He nods. Uh, it is a dice pool, however, but... Okay. Give me that roll. So... Present survival weird. It is not the best dice pool, but it will have to do. Oh, it's a terrible weapon. Okay. Exceptional success because your mask is still down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does that do for dice pool ones? Use whatever your character's weird or mantle rating. Okay, well, I don't have a mantle. Or technically, do I, yeah, technically do. I do now have a mantle, but it's still one, so weird is still higher. It's only at two. All right, so... I will be pulling from the ground a plus two stone sword, essentially. He nods and calls the spear back to him as he portals out, leaving just you and the loyalist. Now, before we get into this little fight, Francis, Lark, and Jimmy, how's your guys' day going? Uh... Francis is prepping food. <laughs> I figured as much. Blissfully ignorant. <laughs> uh, Lark? Mm. 
working? Uh, yeah, I'm working. I'm, I'm working. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get our initiatives going. I still have. I don't have my shield. Dark times. Wow. Oh, hmm. This is gonna suck. I always roll a one. <laughs> every. Every time. <laughs> Alright. Well. He's going to attack first. However, what is your defense? Uh, three, because I don't have my shield. Please take, that would be four damage. Mitigated by your armor, of course. So, bashing, yes. Because, uh, it is not like supernatural armor, so it doesn't actually count for not taking bashing on. Yeah. Uh, okay, what do I do? Do I have a plan besides swing? I, I have to ask, is there... Is there any, like, electricity in this room? Like, wiring nothing it's, it's just okay. a stone room some stone tablets okay it, well there's no more stone tablets well uh, okay there were stone tablets <laughs> um strategic retreat upstairs um yeah no that might actually be a good idea actually do I from my, my previous excursion here, do they have power in this building? Did I notice any wall sockets when I was here with the room? No, you did not. Okay. Damn, mission failed. Then again, I don't know why you would be looking for it. <laughs> I don't know, just have there to was, glance over. There was a fancy there any lock. Light, any light switches? <laughs> um, no, okay. I guess I'm just going to swing and see how it goes. What's his defense? His defense is five. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I will willpower it to make it a flat roll. Wait. That's not seven damage, because this is... It's three damage, sorry. Or wait, what was the base damage of this norm, of a chopping sword normally? It would be... Um, four. So, plus one, so five. Because I... Yeah, that's not... Seems right, because so seven minus five is two plus two, so yeah, five lethal. Sorry for my not being able to count correctly. It finds its mark and it hurts. And with that crack of armor, you hear a voice in your head. All the voices are back, huh? Don't worry, my child. Our connection will grow stronger. At this point, I do need to ask uh, Le or Gandhi a question. At what? Yeah. What was your mantle at the point that you lost it? Three. Please gain another point of mantle. <laughs> so it's mantle two. Yes, and it is retroactive now. Okay, so that's the retroactive point of the mantle. All right, 
So I still need to do three things to get to my level five. So, um, well, I was also saying retroactive. Um, Your sword is buffed? Yes. No, oh, okay. A after this strike. All right, all right. He's going to twist and attempt to cut you. Uh, so, again. He misses. His sword <laughs> spins. rolling like shit now. <laughs> he spins. Not the last time when I wanted to do a cool disarm and like point down maneuver. <laughs> he spins his blade and you're just not there. You're noticing that he is legitimately blind. Okay. But they... Ah, <sighs> poor kid. He is the enemy, but I still do feel bad for the slave here. But alas, such feelings are not going to really stay my hand here. And uh, I'm swinging again. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna burn another willpower to make it an even roll. I'm assuming he still has his five defense. Yes. Okay. And I guess actually I didn't retroactively increase it, so it would be eight. Eight damage. His armor has been damaged to the point where it's somewhat ineffectual at this point. You hear a howling in your mind. Take another point of mantle. Is that how this works? I mean, you know what? If, if Apollo is decreeing that this is how we're going to run the court, this will be how we run the court, I guess. And at this point, he's making an all-out attack and burning a point of willpower. Here we go! And before he rolls, like, 15 damage. <laughs> <laughs> that is 9 damage. So that's more than my armor, so I have pierced armor too. As he finally lands a blow, you can hear the plates in your armor shatter. That was expensive, you know? That's gonna take a while to stitch back together. And, uh... But, uh, yeah, nine is above eight, so that's a, that's a lethal for me. So, uh... Yeah, he's finally drawn blood, and uh, I'm, uh, I've had enough of it, too. Uh, what's uh, what's all out attack again? You lose it's plus two? Yes, you lose your defense. Plus two. Oh, no. Alright, well... He doesn't have his defense, then, correct? 100%. Alright, so let's see... Area of expertise, swords, willpower... Plus two. Uh, ten? We are, we are all out attacking for ten, hit with ten lethal damage. His armor reduces two of it. He falls to the ground unconscious. 
bleeding out. It's going to take one more point of lethal damage. Okay. Um, time to see if he's actually blind, because there's an old saying, an eye for an eye, right? As you yank off the blindfold, his eyes are still there, but they have been completely flayed open. Oh. Well, an eye for an eye makes the world go blind, but I'm afraid you're already blind, so it won't affect you, my friend. Uh, I'm gonna, with the point of my sword, I'm, I'm ripping out one of his eyes. He slowly begins to fade into just a puddle of blood with a few scraps of glamour floating above it. Well, uh, I give, give a sigh here as fight's over again fairly quickly. But... And I'm met with probably a very deafening silence in this chamber now. You are, but you do gain one more point of mantle. So you... Wait. Yeah, you're up four now? Apparently, yes. Okay. It's also... About at this time that you do hear Apollo in your head one more time. I expect to see you at the next solar event. We have much to discuss. Until then, do what you feel is right. I don't really care. Well, I will reflect on the events that have transpired in the past 15 minutes and make my way out of the building, I suppose. Have some time with my thoughts. Francis. Mm-hmm. Yes. Give me a roll for a your roll. cooking. Cooking. Feel free to burn willpower. Sure. What? <laughs> Zero successes. <laughs> well, also my reservation. <laughs> not my best work. <laughs> However, this well, is an extended action. I, okay. We're having, I we're having spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got a few TV dinners in the freezer. <laughs> Go ahead and... Uh, you have four more rolls. All right. No willpower on that one. Two successes. <laughs> uh, ooh, a five. I'll take the five plate. <laughs> uh, zero. And two. You were never meant to succeed. Like, even on... I, I gave it ten successes. This come up at nine. What is don't, that? don't I get one more roll? Because... Extended actions are the base dice, base dice pool. Oh, yeah, true. you get one more roll. One more. I get one more. I'm gonna willpower that one. Oops, yes. Where have I seen this? Hey. <laughs> Four. <laughs> it's taken all day. The meal is ready, though. What exactly have you prepared? Oh, let's see. What did I mention before? There's uh, there's some stuffed mushrooms for appetizers. Uh, everything's got like little bits of goblin fruit in them. 
Uh, and then the main course is going to be like cherry, chipotle, uh, pork loin, some sides. I think the the pepper would be nice for the chipotle part in there. And then dessert. I didn't come up with the dessert. A cheesecake, maybe? With some cherries as a uh, goblin fruit? Yeah. Something like that. I'm assuming, as stated, this took you all day. You're going to send out a text message? Yes, mass text. Plus one that doesn't get a text, but uh, he gets his own kind of invite. <laughs> Lark. Yeah. We're outside of work. Have you been doing anything specific? She's been doing a lot of reflecting and getting a glimpse of her, of memories of her past life, ones that haven't faded away. She hates that how close yet far she was from seeing home, even though she didn't fully understand where that mirror was. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try one more time. I'm gonna try. Here, walk. Wait. Okay. I'm at work. Oh. Do it off off the clock. And just think of anything else. <laughs> what well. else was around in the 17th century? What other mirror than that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I only thought of one mirror, guys. <laughs> uh. Obviously, a lot of those mirrors that existed back then, you can't account for the fact that they are even still in one piece. However, as your workday comes to an end, you would receive Francis's text message. Dinner time, darlings. <laughs> <laughs> you would. Okay. I really, really have you as what he made. Uh, hmm. All right, I'm gonna. It'll just be a quickie. I'm gonna try again. Mirror walk. Same mirror again. <laughs> That's glamour, and it was a roll, wasn't it? Yes. That I totally wrote down. Um, I get here. Here? Uh, yes. One glamour, one will. But survival weird. Yes. Weird. It's survival weird. Okay. Okay, I'm glad I finally put something in that. I just want to poke my one success. Jeez. I just want to poke my head out first. This time, not my whole body. It's 5 p.m. In a, in a museum. <laughs> Several people uh, make very loud screams as you stick your head out of a mirror during active business hours of a museum. I am invisible for at least one minute. Okay. All right, pop back in. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, you know. No, you know what? No, I'm going through this mirror. I'm gonna run through this mirror. I don't care. I'm just gonna book it to the nearest exit. I remember there was a door. I did find a door, so I'm going to remember that night of running. I'm gonna book it through that door. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> He's going as fast as possible. As you run out, you you're encountered with the busy streets of New York City. 
What's that? I'm kidding. Oh no, but for her, yeah, what's that? Um, she's gonna keep running and call. She's gonna call her ride, find the nearest alley, and just run. <laughs> Squeaks! <laughs> Squeaks! Where we are? It's gonna take him a while to get there. <laughs> I mean, he can take a shortcut through the hedge. If I call him, he he comes. But at the moment, I... Yeah, what is that thing called that I... No, it's not that thing. Never mind. I'm running. Yeah. Where oh, are you and... heading? That's a good question. Um, so let's say um, Lark did in a, you know, fast forward after she broke her phone, she bought a new phone. Um, wait, I have a map. I'm gonna open my map as I'm running down alleyways and see where where's the nearest park. Am I close to Central Park? Central Park's not too far away. It, oh, hold on. Here's yeah. The, here's the nice Google. thing. Google. Get a real map. <laughs> yeah, I work for the map place. I should get a discount, huh? I'll do that. <clears throat> He's good. 25% off. I work there for 50-ish years. So, I earn my- I earn at least one map per lunch. That's it. Add that to my contract. Can that cost you? <laughs> it's... Three minutes. <laughs> oh, she, she can do that! I'm booking it to Central Park! And I'm going to hide for a minute, or a, a while, at least an hour. I'll fashionably late to dinner. Francis, I'll text that as I'm running. <laughs> Me. I did it! <laughs> I just wanted to do it once. Dang it, just once. Jimmy. What sort of events have been going on through Jimmy's day? Uh, finally getting around to paying that debt. <laughs> Roll me a wits plus investigation. Four die. Nice. <laughs> take an exception. Or take inspired. Yeah. It takes a lot of like, and no small amount of help from Rum himself, who has now decided that he's just going to ghost you until uh, you find his fruit. Ghost or shadow. Ghost. Okay. <laughs> I, I use the term ghost because he thinks he's being sneaky. Ah. But with a exceptional success in investigation, uh, Jimmy's able to turn up the fact that he's being followed pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm just imagining like a like a, a large rock with just two hands like either side of it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <sighs> Fine, if it if it keeps him happy. However, your search takes you out of town and into the woods, where a body lays. This body is not of human or, or is of human origin with a very large hole in its chest. All right, that's uh... Yeah, that's not good. Um 
any distinguishing features and we'll see apart from a large hole in its chest but anything doesn't look like somebody from Hanover so you're not necessarily familiar with them they're not somebody that you know they seem to be probably in their 40s short hair male rather prominent beard can I check the pockets is there as you check the pockets as you pull your hand back from one of the pockets some of the like slimy juice that you would expect a rotting fruit to have comes back on your fingers I will well get that off on the uh, on the grass around around me is it it's rotting fruit it's not infected no there's no worms in Okay. It's at this point that Rum kind of leans against the rock that he was hiding behind. Without looking without looking back at him. Yeah. Yeah, I think I found your fruit. Welcome yeah, to, uh... I think you did too. Hey. You humans have stuff inside your head, right? What are you thinking? But he, he walks yes, over. Quite a lot. Quite a lot of important stuff, generally speaking. Well, maybe we can find out. I mean, obviously, a uh, chestburster happened here. I want to see if I can maybe see where it went. Maybe in his final moments, he saw it go someplace. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, I don't, th I don't think he's using his, using the contents of his brain anymore. So, uh, reminds me of a lot of people I know. And with that, uh, he lifts a finger, which grows a very razor sharp, um, claw, and he starts to cut along the top of the skull, and pries the top of the skull away. Jimmy's gonna make a very deliberate point of looking all the way, because like, it's... Just, no, 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 no. Rum kind of pauses and he goes, Uh... Jimmy? I need you to look at this. Deep breath, I'll have a look. As you look, you start to notice that his brain is full of holes. As if there's as if there were worms in his brain as well. Yeah, I can't help but feel that's what uh well, if the, if the chest burst, it didn't finish him up. Yep, we lost him. Yeah, you cut out oh. at the end. Oh, if the uh, chest burst, it didn't finish him, that would have done it. And I'm going to make a roll for rum here. Intelligence plus a call. Rum's kind of looking down and he goes, Okay, so I don't really know what's going on here. But would you mind hearing a crackpot theory? I'm sure you're going to tell me anyway. Yeah, I was going to tell you, no matter what. Um, crackpot theory time. You know those worms? They dig into the hedge? Yeah. 
What if they could breach barriers? What? What do you mean if they could breach barriers, you mean come this side? What if they could breach the barrier of people's dreams and then manifest themselves in the mind through the dream? If you told me this six months ago, a year ago, I would have thought you were insane. Now, I'm... Now I'm thinking you might be on something. I mean, I mean it, I've never heard of anything like that happening, but... I mean, we can walk through dreams, the dreams of others, whatever. Who's to say it's something we don't fully understand, can't? At this point, your phone goes off with Francis's text message. Uh, I'll just text back. I'll be there. Caught up with something. Uh, uh, done about you, but um, I can't really do much with fire. But I reckon better be safe. Maybe burn a body. Maybe uh, how fresh it is. I'll take care of that. Um, and Rum kind of also points at a very obvious trail, and then I'm probably gonna go follow that. Well, you... That Francis has called me along to something. You remember him, right? Big guy. Good with food. Yeah, I do. So if you want to wait, I'll, I'll catch you later. We can go along together. Safety, right? Look out for one another. That's fair. I... I... I'm... Before I burn this body, I want to... You humans usually have something called, like, funeral rites or something, right? You want to give him a funeral? I mean, that's what you guys do to respect if you're dead, correct? Yeah. I don't yeah, see any reason for him to be disrespected. Um, if I search him again, is there any chance I could find a wallet or any kind of ID go ahead and give me nah in this case now nah, I'm not gonna make you roll it's unfortunately it doesn't seem like he had any sort of ID and the more you're looking over him you're also noticing like the shoe is on the wrong foot his doesn't look like he was all there when he was getting dressed. And how old did you... Is there any indication of how old? Forties. Forties. Yeah. Well, uh, uh... Usually these things are done by, uh... Friends and family. It's not... Well... Pretty rare for a couple of strangers to... to have a funeral for you, but... If you want to show those respect... Show that respect, then. I'll say a few words. No, no, no. You you have stuff you need to do. I, I'll i I'll handle it. It's okay. You you need right. to get to your friends. All right. We'll make sure you, uh, you want to do that. You say, uh, you say nice things about him. And you might not be able to hear you now, but you tell him to be at peace. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. I'll think of something. Sure you will. Stick around. We'll follow the trail. And yeah, deep breaths, because that was absolutely disgusting. I will make my way back towards town. Leon. Yes. 
have had some time to wander the woods or head back to Hanover after the incident in the church. What have you been doing? Well, um, trying to make sure uh, I, I bandage my wound because uh, I am probably still potentially bleeding. Um, but I... Leon's been alone with his thoughts for a little bit. The prevailing thought here is just... This better be worth it. I don't know. I didn't know those people. I didn't know what they were doing. I don't know why what they were worshipping wanted to break free and kill them. If they even died, I don't know what happened to them. And there's a, there is that thought of, you know, I've seen some pretty, pretty nasty shit in Arcadia. Sorry. Uh, pretty, <laughs> seen some uh, things in Arcadia and people disappearing. Well, I mean, that's his immediate thought is um, Faye took him. But in this case, he doesn't know what could have happened to them. It could be worse, could be better. But <laughs> trying to trying to turn back the past isn't going to happen here. So um, he's just going to hope that the sun has a, has the uh, has enough light to <laughs> to uh, to illuminate the uh, the darkness that kind of surrounds the, the poor Motley here. And, and uh, hoping that we don't lose anyone else, because he's already failed someone. With those thoughts, the phone in your pocket buzzes. Francis's message. I'm gonna, you know, take a take a, you know, look down, wound, you know, blood on my hand. Hmm. Ah, yes. Great time for dinner do I do I know where he is setting this up at like where... you probably would um even though I haven't actually said it because I was looking for a venue he probably doesn't want it to be around a bunch of people mm -hmm. so either he bought out or rented out the place or it's just going to be at his apartment you have a few dots of resources, right? Yeah. It... Well, then I'll just ask over text, you know, where am I heading? You know, I've got a bit of a walk ahead of me. With the few dots of resources, you definitely rented out a venue. Okay. And I will send him the address. So we're going to go ahead and skip some time here. Enough time for Jimmy and Leon to arrive. Larkspur and the special guest have not arrived yet. The special guest has already communicated he won't arrive until everybody else is there. For Francis's notations. Okay, well, we're almost all here. We're still waiting on a couple, so... Well, Where I, is uh, Lark? I'd like to say I uh, stopped off and I really don't know my stuff, but the uh, guy at the store said that this wasn't a bad bad bottle and produced a bottle of wine. Ooh, yeah, yeah. that is a good one. He does know his stuff. Yes, we, we can use that. I'll take it and uh, put it on ice. <laughs> Uh, what are the chances you want to spare some of that for a bit of disinfectant? <laughs> what, what, what happened to you? You did. It's we been worry. a morning, all right. <laughs> also, it's been a morning. The huntsman already came for me once. Oh. Also, for Jimmy and Francis, 
you were aware of Leon's mantle when you first met him. The heat of summer. You were aware of his absence of a mantle when he left the court. Now, he legitimately has rays of sun beaming off of him where his mantle should be. And occasionally, these beam of lights quiver as if they're becoming tentacles, but then they immediately reform into just straight beams of light. Oh, you look different. Do something with your hair. New clothes, new shoes. Uh, yeah, speaking of clothes, I am going to have to do some <laughs> stitching here. As I am now again looking down at the now tattered... And, uh, this is not in great condition. Um, well, I, I, can, I can help a bit with uh, the open wounds. Hold on, let me, let me get a contract out here. I can do this. Oh, uh, it's... Not much more than a scratch. A deep scratch, but a scratch nonetheless. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, gift of warm blood. I can I can do that one. A glamour and a willpower. So Francis is it doesn't really say how they create an ointment from dreams and the memory of spring flowers. <laughs> Salves the target's wounds with it. Dice pull of wits medicine mantle. I, I am going to say you probably don't really need to actually do anything. It's a no? point of the Oh, okay. Well, if, if you say so, then uh, if you're fine with it. I've had worse. As <laughs> yeah, but having kinda... worse. Having worse doesn't really mean you should let this one go. I've had worse as I'm going to kind of reach towards the scarring of the, uh, well, the iron across my face. Hmm. If everybody would give me a perception check. Bonjour. Two. Leon got four. Everybody is able to hear the sound of Lark's motorcycle pulling up. Oh, well, 30 minutes to an hour late. <laughs> uh, I would like to add, while I was in Central Park, could I have harvest from somebody? Please. You need to harvest. Oh, my glamour back! Can I spend? Don't worry about it! Can I get that? Can we say I did that? Please. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Don't shake your head at me, Melly. <laughs> <laughs> that was too glamour. <laughs> hey. Fashion will be late, you say? I was seeing the sights, trying new things, staying on the run. It's fun. Ten minutes. Fashionably late is ten minutes. Then I must be gloriously late. So, what's going on? Glad to see all of that. Leon, you're a... He's bright now, isn't he? <laughs> you're a little bit of sunshine instead of being a cloud of doom. Nice to see you. <laughs> Forgot half of his clothes, but here we are. Yeah. Apparently, it's dressed down. It, it's been a morning. Fashion? Things I heard have about... happened. I am processing them myself. <laughs> and because I have to at this point, 13 minute warning, Lark. Activate everything! I'm, I'm spending everything. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> as so you are... as you proceed to enter the building, oh. hmm? but she's talking. Oh, I didn't notice. 
as you enter, a flock of carrion birds fly in with you and perch upon the rafters, staring directly at you. Guys, we gotta go. And you guys just see her, like, just glowing, because I am activating all my contracts. Um, I will spend the time where I just got. We have to go. Now. I, go to the bathroom. I, I mean, I'm fairly certain we were planning to go after this anyway. It's no, like, the huntsman. Just... We must leave. Now. Well, we're just gonna run it. We haven't even eaten yet. What do you mean, huntsman? You, your priorities have switched and she's like okay yeah primal glory red revenge a cunning i activate all of that and i am running to the bathroom to the mirror francis is setting up the table <laughs> <laughs> jimmy come with me now have you been drinking already like he's not yes. stopping she's gone to the bathroom <laughs> the huntsman is coming when is the huntsman not coming? Well, he did last time. A few months ago, he showed up. You want to go smack that dog? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Just give him a, a, a treat or something. Oh, Gotta be on his carpet again. <laughs> um. She's probably, she probably is uh, barking at a tennis ball sitting on the floor because it's not playing with her. This <laughs> is usually how she does it. That no, no, no. the other, or her, her little brother is now not going to, is trying to take a nap. <laughs> uh, she seems to have calmed down. Sorry about that. Um, what, where was, what was I just saying? Um, I mean... <laughs> To her paranoia's credit, a few months ago, last time the Huntsman made his grand appearances, he interfered with my business, and then interfered with her business. And, uh, I mean, perhaps he's doing the same theme again, since it seemed to have worked last time? Yeah, so let's change location. I got a way to get everyone out of here. Preferably now. What for you, Francis? A sudden... <laughs> I mean... T to take everything with us, we, uh... I mean, it's not quite the same, uh... Same surroundings, but... You know, play it safe. Oh, I know you made the effort. Don't want to see that go to, uh... Go to I mean, yeah, I spent a bit of money and a bit of effort, but, uh... Take it with us. Like I say, not quite the same surrounding. You got five minutes. Fast food. We say. We'll be safe. Okay, well, I'll, I'll start uh, packing things up. Uh, oh, it's... I'll help. <laughs> so, so like, Lark, yeah, I'm out of game here. I feel kind of bad about, you know, not letting Francis do his thing here, but realistically, why would we stay? I know. I, I know. <laughs> um, Lark, it's like, get... yeah. it's still, it's still, sorry, you... I was going to say, still have the food, but we take it somewhere else. As you enter into the <laughs> restroom, you are met by a very burly goblin who stands at the mirror and immediately slams his fist into the mirror, shattering it into tiny pieces. You piece of... <laughs> he goes, under boss's orders here, we are to have a nice meal, so you will sit down, shut up, or I will break every let bone in your body until you die. Nope. She bounces you away did. from him. And guys, what the heck is this thing doing here? He, follow Francis? he follows her out. Francis. I uh, unsling the shotgun. <laughs> Francis, you are aware this is actually everybody's aware. This is the same goblin that delivered the message the first time. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, another toy of the Huntsman comes to die this day. Very well. I am well, the toy no. of no one. Uh -huh. he's, he's just hes just doing his job. Let's just calm down. Just calm the hell down and sit down. Why? 
<laughs> Why is there a goblin? Why did I get signal the huntsman? What are you up to? And at yeah. this point, another goblin exits the other restroom. Start answering, Francis. What have you done? Francis, what what's going on? Well, it looks like I'm gonna need the special rounds today. We are having what? dinner. What? Can't you tell? Why? From the kitchen. We've got together. We've got. Uh, um. I don't know if I've got time to invoke the loophole. Loophole. Um. I want to use the royal court, which forbid violence from breaking out in a mediated gathering. You. <laughs> Why do you do this to me every time? <laughs> I'm loading the iron slugs right now. <laughs> Violence? Because you because really you kick off. We're really? all going to die. <laughs> we all could have left. I sh I should have left. I've never come back. I mean, you still can. Like, there's nothing stopping you from exiting the front door at the moment. I don't think, a apart from the huntsman who's coming up the street right now. <laughs> Probably. Actually, no. He comes from the kitchen dressed in a fine tuxedo with a bow tie. Oh, you didn't have time to run down to Walmart and pick up a new suit of armor, huh? He sniffs the air. Ah, the smell Sorry. of that contract. <laughs> uh, it's also um, social violence is prohibited as well, because I'm Ferris. Social violence? Social violence? That means can no one's I, helping. <laughs> what do you can mean? I no win one... with him? Can I... not an you will take the damage. I hate you. <laughs> Give me. This... I hate you. <laughs> he is doing a good thing, I mean, but... He, he smiles and he... He opens up his coat and he pulls out what looks to be a bottle of Arcadia's finest champagne. He brought a gift. And he puts it in the pail with the ice alongside the wine that Jimmy brought. He proceeds to sit down at the table. So, I've been invited to dinner, and I plan on enjoying my dinner here. You all should sit down and do the same. Thanks, I think I lost my appetite glaring at Francis. Now, now, honey, dear, you don't really have a choice. A pledge was made to me, and unless you want your friend there to have some unfortunate accidents with the weird, I would sit down. Francis? I'm gonna rethink about friends. I would like to ask you a question here. Hmm, yes? How long has it been? How long have you been working against us? See, now that's a complicated question. It... Mm. To think that I thought you simply lost your temper in the hedge. You simply didn't know what you were doing at the hollow. Should have known better, of course. Well, but I, I should tell you right now, then no. And I think I might speak for the other two here. Well, you one. made a deal, yes. But if you are so willing to make such a deal, so be it. I will leave you to the hedge. I don't care what the weird punishes you for. Should you decide to leave this area, Leon, do know full well that I have every right to come after you. And you have every right to die. With that, he raises a gloved hand. 
the leather fades slightly and you do see the hint of iron before the glove returns to leather. Now, I came here to have a dinner. Our little friend over there, and he motions towards Jimmy, has made it to where no violence can be done in this location. Not that I had intended any violence to begin with. This was meant to be a simple farewell meal. Yeah, so if we could all take a seat... Calm down. We can get on with it. You're acting real chummy. What did he give you? Yeah, certainly not freedom, because that is not, isn't for him to give. What, you got a little seat on the Fae Council or something? Be some other type of pet for them? What could he possibly offer you for you to turn all of us in? The Huntsman begins, you know putting a napkin down the front of his button-up shirt, you know, <coughs> checking the silverware, you know, making sure everything is in order. What I got for myself is not really important at the moment. No, I think it is. You know, since we're going to have dinner conversation, he actually walks up and takes a seat. Let that be the topic of discussion. Ah. I'm okay with that topic of discussion, but I still need everybody to take a seat first. Except for, obviously, any gestures towards Francis. I'm assuming, unless you would like, I could order the goblins to serve the food. No, that's all right. I will go get it. Uh, Jimmy and Leon, please take a seat. I will, I will sit down next to Lark and whisper something as I do so. Um, Um, just quietly, just ready to ride the lead. So, uh, I will invoke my inner fey and I will pick up the chair. I am taking the seat. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to start making my way towards the door with the seat. Few goblins have already barred the front door with their bodies. Francis is busy serving food, so he's not really paying attention right now. Yeah, take a seat. And I, I, I don't, I right don't, and we mean not take the seat outside. Well, that wasn't really specified, and last I checked, the weird doesn't care. I seem to have fulfilled my end of, end of the uh, requirements here, and I must I'm leaving now. Goodbye. I, I reckon the other two can do the same here. With a, with a snap of his fingers, the chair disappears from your hands and places itself back down where it was. What, you think I can't just pick it back up again? I, I've still got my hands, you know? Why don't you have a seat? Oh, I was say something. Oh, oh, sorry. Did, was I meant to take a different seat? Why don't you, you sit? I see a bench over there. <laughs> Leon, let me be frank with you, okay? Things are kind of out of your hands at the moment. Yes, the seat. It's no longer in my hands, and I'm, I can put it back in my hands. The Huntsman kind of speaks of, Leon, come on. We've known each other far too long for you to be this coy. And he nods to Francis as Francis finishes serving him. It looks delicious, Francis. Why don't you serve Leon? He did agree to a dinner. He did. So come and have your dinner. Eat it. Well, I mean, a dinner is mostly... It's more about the social gathering, isn't it? If the food is not quite as important. Well, then come and socialize. I, I mean, I am speaking to you from across the room. We, you paid for the whole room. We're going to use the whole room. 
At this point, the no. huntsman kind of waves his hand and he goes, I am so sorry that your friends are being difficult. Now, Lark, you wanted to have a conversation about what Francis was offered. Yeah. We all know your position in this game. You can't offer something to him that's not yours to give, so... What could you possibly give him to get his attention? I offered him a chance to say goodbye to his fellow friends before I hauled you all off to Arcadia. And that I would talk with the Keeper. See if I could... get special privileges, which I have been in talks with. He looks directly at Francis. I am still in talks with. That is an ongoing discussion that I am having. I have no further updates on that particular matter, however. But rest assured, I am doing what I can. Well, as... As long as you're still upholding your end, I'm still upholding my end. That's, Speaking of upholding it. your end, glances at the food. Let's let's have some. That that was it. That's <laughs> that, that was it. Really, really. You got the lackey murderous hunter to give a good word when we escaped after all that time. For what they did to us, you really think they're gonna let us go? And what what give put a leash on us? Hey, hey, I got I got a leash with a goblin in a goblin market. So we're all gonna have leashes to our fae. Is that really what you put your hope into, Francis? Francis is ignoring Lark and is that watching is the huntsman. Pitiful. That is a I thought I made a stupid deal. The huntsman's <laughs> going to proceed to eat. One. This is ridiculous. The huntsman is going to proceed to eat. Jimmy's using his uh, uh, using his play as an astro. <laughs> I'm assuming that this plate <clears throat> he finishes it obviously before anybody else since nobody else is touching their food. Yeah. I'll drink some wine. Hey, there you go. Yeah. Oh, I'll have some wine. I'll take all From the wine. The not hun not the Huntsman's bottle. wine. Huh? Yep, I got the whole bottle. Okay. Well, if you guys don't like the uh, the first course, I'll go get the, the main course. I don't think our tastes were ever the same. You have special Ooh. delicacies, don't you? Go and bring the next course. The pork loin. Is it actually pork? You know, doctors have successfully transplanted pig organs into a human. It's funny how how much in common we have. And he sets the plate in front of her. Ah, uh, yeah. It is quite funny. I thought that only pigs rolled around in their own feces, but it would seem you want to do the same. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, pigs eat everything and anything. Kind of like how you were back in Arcadia. Ain't that just a tick? Mm. Hold on here. Composure. <laughs> yeah. Just composure, or...? Yep, this is straight composure. That's not good. Zero. <laughs> Francis? He's... <laughs> he's gonna spend the glamour to drop his mask. And you see how... I will... No, not to drop the mask, to, to activate... What's his kith? where his mouth grows really, really big. You have no idea the things that I went through back in Arcadia. No idea. What were you, just a fart on the wind? You didn't eat your family, you didn't eat your friends. You have nothing. Yep, just like you. I would do anything to not to go back to that. Including selling us out. But you are going back to that, my friend. No, my friend. <laughs> yeah, you might want to lose that term real quick. Not not if I have anything to say about it. You Eat your food. You don't have a say. He does, as I point to the huntsman. He's giving a word, but they don't care about any of us. We're just ornaments for their entertainments. Now, 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 as he 
delicately cuts into the pork loin, puts a piece in his mouth, chews Still it, eating. swallows. <laughs> See, here's the thing about us Fey, though. We keep our word, unlike you dirty little humans. Or, well, I can't really call you guys human anymore. But I'm sure you understand my meaning. Unless that thick skull of you, yours has gotten even thicker. They say when you break a bone, the bone grows thicker. wonder if that's the same for your skull. M medically, yes, it is, my friend, but why would you care? He shrugs, takes another cut of pork, pops it into his mouth. Now, come on. This was supposed to be a final meal before everything you knew ended and you're all squandering it with the exception of francis who's taken so much time out of his day to try and provide you with a decent meal thing is as long as this meal is in front of us as long as we don't eat it it's still the meal is ongoing and while oh. we're here you can't do anything we're going to do. Well, see, here's the thing. You're partially correct. The meal is only over once the meal is over. However, Francis here also knows that when a plate is cleared, it is classified as finished. One plate has already been cleared. We're now on the main course. And at this point, he actually finishes the last bit on his plate. Sets his silverware down, pushes it forward. So, actually, Francis is dictating how much time you have left. And I should be grateful, get hauled back oh, back to the other side in five minutes, an hour, however long this meal is. Is that a, is that a, really, is that really a good threat? Francis gets up and gets the dessert. <laughs> Don't answer. I thought it would near him <laughs> um jimmy jimmy question about your magics here they oh. prohibit violence correct <clears throat> yeah one would say that laying hands on another to prevent movement is could be violent i'd say so so Truly, what does stop us from standing up and walking to the front door? Those goblins? Do they What's, want to uh, touch us and incur the wrath of the weird? Well, once we're out. Once we're out, I have another plan. I have an idea. Yeah, I've got something. The Die. huntsman kind of sighs as the dessert is put in front of him. Listen, why would you be so disrespectful to your friend here? Because he's, he's not a friend. Not anymore. This, this little play? Between, between us and you, it might not be over. But us and him, he's dead to us. This isn't really a friendly thing either. He knows what we dislike. He is clearly, he doesn't care about our well-being if you're here. Well, as he begins to eat the dessert, not waiting. See, the problem here is, is you guys made a pledge to him, so you will you know deal with the weird should you choose not to finish dinner he will face the weird should you know anything else happen as he very well knows and you guys know and probably don't care however i care about all of your lives and Francis, in his wisdom, has, de has decided that this is the way to make sure that nobody else gets hurt. 
yet. Well, Whether back there. Hmm. Now, I do have a question to ask Hooter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dessert. I'm assuming that is the one, correct? I sent you some messages. Yes. Let me check. I believe it was dessert. It is n okay. Sorry, are we cutting that part out? Because you call them pooter. Yes. <laughs> okay, just <laughs> double checking. All right. But, uh, so, he's not so, uh, Hold on. my fellow cool people, not traitors, I <laughs> have a plan, and it's called We're Flying Away. Uh, um, you are going to have to wait one moment for any plan. Oh, I know, but I am <clears throat> over the table discussing. Uh, we're going to walk out the door. Uh, we're going to fly away, right? Um, <laughs> this may not work. Well, you see I the huntsman that... cough slightly. And he, as he pulls away his hand, there's a little bit of blood. And he stares it at bleed. it. <laughs> Sorry, got it. He looks over at Francis. Francis pours some wine. Mm -hmm. Crafty, crafty little. He turns immediately to Jimmy. Question about your contract. Shoot. Poisoning an individual. That counts as violence, doesn't it? Well, it depends. Depends on the poison, I suppose. But... What is the penalty from the contract? Nothing. No effect until I... Well... Is a mediated gathering. Yeah, I, 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 as, I am asking, what is the penalty, though? Oh, no, it's uh, as long as it's a mediated gathering, there's, it won't do anything. And with that, I'm just going to say, uh, I am going to invoke... He just admitted he got poisoned. Yes. Okay, I am going to invoke. Oh, where's it gone? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Unravel the tapestry. What'd that do? It rewinds by ten time by ten seconds. Every on oh. except my own, and I have of what you're, you're cutting it out. Uh, Try again. Oh, uh, unravel the tapestry, rewinds the last 10 seconds. Everybody, every other character's actions continue as, they, as they've as progressed. Normally, only my actions are changed, and I have a memory of about to happen. Okay. So I want to unravel time for the last 10 seconds um, to before he took that bite. And... Um, is it a roll? No, it's instant. Um, so two, ooh, two glamour, one willpower. So, um, and, just, to, sorry. We're just gonna cut into maybe, maybe so you, you don't actually have to do anything here. Yeah. Um, the rural court, it does specify the contract does not stop violence if it already started. So it could be argued that if Francis already poisoned things, that, it doesn't count. that ship kind of already sailed, so the contract wouldn't stop. Oh it. yeah, yeah, yes. Reasoned like a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being a thing. <laughs> so yeah, if it's yeah, if it's already started, that is. He stands up. Another stamina check. 
At this point, a worm burst from his chest. Ah! Oh! Francis takes a sip of wine. <laughs> I throw my bottle down! <laughs> He throws the table back as he's kind of just writhing as he kind of grabs this worm and snaps it in two out of his chest. He is going to take five points of aggravated damage. Oh, that's gonna happen to me! And so he, he knocked the table over? Yes. Violence! Alright, so you all see Gun, I, uh, Leon's guns taped underneath the table. Oh. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm going to win with this game. I am still going to say you still did make the con the deal to go back to Arcadia, so uh, you are still dead. Sorry, kid. <laughs> hey, you're still dead to me, too. You'll, uh, thank, but... you'll thank me one day. And I'm going to because the, the contract is only in effect with a mediated gathering, and I am the mediator. So I am just going to just full-on charge those two goblins and try and just basically burst out the door. Yeah, yep. But let's as soon as I'm I... out, you can bring the noise. Following him, I am going to just full-blown, like, on my hands like this, and just as much one as I can, just, like, pinpoint it towards both of them. Oh, man. Both of who? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I guess, guess I can only hit one. No, I'll do it at the Huntsman as I'm running. Just, yeah. Just aim all the wind towards him. One tunnel. Obviously, his lance comes to him. Uh... Francis, you are the closest. I am the closest. What's, um... what's your defense? <laughs> My defense is six. So, we are going to... He is not happy. <laughs> <laughs> so that is... Point of expertise. Willpower. <laughs> all out attack. Dang, do I at least hit the him before he hits Francis? Yeesh. All right, so here we go. Oh, that is going to be seven aggravated damage. Let's see. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Who am I? Are you okay? I'm still alive. <laughs> As he plunges the cross spear directly into your stomach and rips it back out the other way. Can I grab it with some oven mitts? That I happen to be wearing. <laughs> I don't know. Why would you have oven mitts on while you're? That's serving? a good question. I, I wouldn't have it. Go ahead. But the trays are hot. He just pulled them out of the oven. They were in the oven, keeping warm. The dessert <laughs> in the oven. Yes. What in the world? Um. So, go ahead and roll me damage for your wind blast. Actually, wait. Nope. He's cloaked in iron. I can't even push him back. That was my goal. You used to shove him back physically. Fey magic can't touch iron. It's what's that magical when it's a little. Uh, it's your magic. magic. It's you do, I a, do I have to make a check to burst outside at all? Yes. That's, okay. That's going to be opposed by the goblins. Yep. Okay. I'll shoot the goblin when I. Yeah. I thought I could do something. And here comes all my good uh, rolls. I don't uh, think you're getting out, <laughs> Jimmy. Sorry. That was five for their five for strength, and then plus two for uh, obviously they're assisting each other. Oh, sorry. What am I making? What check? It would be strength plus athletics. Strength athletics. Uh... You got to beat seven. Seven. Plus, uh... Five. I've got oh. to five, and I'm okay. rolling five. You, you said plus two, I was like, oh. Uh, we'll power this. Let's see. I was saying their roll was five plus the two. Oh, so close. 
I should have cashed in. <laughs> they're gonna kind of hold you back, and they're just gonna be like, no, 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 no. We, we're here to watch the show now. And at that point, they kind of turn you around, and you see the huntsman yank the iron spear out of Francis. So I'm still, technically, I'm still here, so that shouldn't have done any damage. Technically, technically, I... he's it's an iron weapon as well, so magic. Oh. <laughs> I want to shoot some people. First, the goblins. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work yet. Oh, Could you... Uh, need to... Did they... Oh, is there a... Could you portal out and in? What is the wall made out of? <laughs> Stone. <laughs> Drywall. <laughs> However, at this point... I didn't hear the answer. I said stone. Okay. What is the ceiling made out of? Uh... It's probably got a drop ceiling. It's a styrofoam. Okay. <laughs> um, however, at this point, another worm busts out of his left arm. Oh, oh that's gross. That's gross. Oh, no. That's gross. E. He's going to take another three points of aggravated damage. Oh. He drops to his knees, the iron spear dropping, and he, with one last motion, he crushes its head in his hand as he falls forward and evaporates into fey dust. I'm still gonna shoot the goblins! <laughs> Francis is gonna drop to his knees. Ah! Uh, did it work? I think you did something. I am so sorry for everything I said. <laughs> Jimmy. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. You notice one thing. The goblins next to you have completely frozen solid. You feel a rush of cold wind behind you. Morning frost. The restaurant is in front of you. The goblins that were barring the entrance are now ice sculptures. Sonia, Morning Frost, makes her way in, looks around. Brava! Wow! Four little runaways finally beat the lapdog. Hmm. Well, almost four, and she eyes poor Francis. <laughs> What are we seeing? Uh, just full female figure, completely frosted over, not wearing clothes, however, um, a more frosted over in her, <laughs> uh, womanly areas. <laughs> Icy censorship. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, deep blue frosted hair white eyes and she just is walking over looking at everyone and kind of eyes Jimmy just one second longer than everyone else I must say, this was quite impressive. Hmm. And oh. to what do we owe the pleasure? Oh yeah, he's on the floor. 
I wouldn't <laughs> talk if I were you, Francis. Wow. Well. I'm gonna go. Can I go and have, try and help Francis up? Of course. No, I'm good. I'll stay here. Yes. I, I'm afraid if I sit up, something's gonna spill out. Ooh. Ooh. Out of game. Can I help him at least get stable? You could technically freeze the wound over. Non delicately. <laughs> So. And with that, <laughs> she freezes over his uh, wound. <laughs> Ow. I lack a gentle touch, but I need you all to hear this. I'm not here for you. I'm simply here to deliver information. Leon, I know you have plenty of encounterment in the hedge, particularly with the hives that you've encountered, the rotten fruit, the bat soil, word of mouth of a disease, a parasite of some sort. I am just here to reaffirm all of the information that all of you have been receiving. It seems that whatever this is, is also infecting the human world through dreams. I don't know how, don't know why, don't even know when it started. Quite frankly, it doesn't really affect me or my kind. But I figured these four little runaways have dealt with it long enough. Why not help? And she eyes Lark. <laughs> As for you, my dear. And she kind of creates a frozen staff. Just long enough to kind of poke her. <laughs> no damage, just... You are running on a time clock, aren't you? Yeah... The whole dream thing you just spoke of, I experienced it. Not very fun. So, you better make an offer for a new body? Yours looks kind of nice. She kind of looks her up and down. No. I'm afraid not. As stated, I'm here simply to give information. And this is for you, specifically. You want a new body? My suggestion would be to go to Brazil. Then I'm going to give you a name. Seek out the one named Kalmir. He may be able to help you with what you're seeking. You just confirmed some old information I got. Thanks. Now, I've given you all a bit of something, and it's only fair that I request something from you. And? Well, in all honesty, such information you just provided was not asked for, so fail to see how an appropriate transfer would be in order. Everything you've said about the hives, I already knew. I don't need some fae telling me what I already know. 
kind of point. Oh, so kindness and moral standing. Politeness doesn't matter here? If this was out of the good of your heart, you would not be asking for anything in return. Give and take. Give and take. And you're already refusing when you haven't even heard my offer, my request. It's simple, really. I need Leon, Francis, and Lark to leave. Where? Just out of this room. We're all right. Out of... Jimmy, is this something that you can handle? I'll be okay. Just, uh... Just and you case. have my word. You have my word. No harm. No trickery. To none of you. I am not here <coughs> for violence. I am here giving information. That is all. Yeah, no harm, no trickery to the rest of us. <laughs> Jimmy. Coincidentally leaving one person who is now going to be left alone. But if this I'll is what he right. wants, I swear if we Leon. leave or lose you too, I'm going to. For the first time. <laughs> for the first time ever, I'm actually going to... I'm probably... Possibly going to miss your slightly, let's be honest, aggressive <laughs> defense of everything. And if, if, if this is it, then uh, I'm sorry that sorry that we ended it like this, Francis. So. Should have known there was more to it than meets the eye. I tried. <laughs> Are you I'll still bleeding? Right. He's still on the floor. That'll help. Hands up. <laughs> You're dragging me out. I'll leave with the other two here. But you have my promise that if Jimmy does not return to us unchanged, well, I hope your ice can withstand the fire that'll be igniting in the hedge. And first I'll hit the hives and... Who's to know who stands in the way of the of the forest fires, you know? And I'm going to make my way over towards uh, Francis. I still don't trust him, but <laughs> like not one bit. Uh, let's give Jimmy one more look. You know I'll find you, right? I know. I'm counting on it. There's nowhere that my eye can't see. Don't you give Miss Frosty another glance over? She just heads on out. Wait, I, I take a bottle that's not broken, and I head on out. <laughs> he rocks a, he rocks the a table got flipped. I don't know if any. Yeah, don't ah. drink that. Oh. champagne. Do not drink the Arcadia juice. Keep running. I, I, I throw it back, <laughs> and I—you guys hear my my motorcycle outside, big enough to fit all three of us. It's a motorcycle. How can it fit all three of us? <laughs> I heard of a chopper and a sidecar. I That's two. To him too. So you're two sidecars. <laughs> We're leaving. We're heading to your church. That's the direction I'm heading. Anyway, <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Once so. they all leave, so uh, Morning Frost freezes over the wall just to ensure that they don't see or listen. So what do I call you now? And she 
puts on her Sonia mask. <laughs> the only name you know. <sighs> yeah. Sorry, you know what Leon's like. I figured as much. I didn't expect any less. Honestly, I expected more. <laughs> he cares in his own strange way. Yeah. So, here I am. You played beautifully. I saw your concert. person I wanted there. Oh, Jimmy, I'm always there. I may have left this world, but I will never leave you. Yeah, I know. You know what the problem is? You are much too real for this world that's filled with lies and mirrors. Anyway, what I was saying was true. Something is going on in the hedge and even in Arcadia. I don't know exactly what it is. Most of us believe we could just imagine it away. Others don't even believe it's truly there. I almost don't want to believe it. But as soon as I saw that it could possibly affect you, I'm not taking any chances, but to believe in this thing. I had to come. I had to warn you. Thank you. If it had been anyone else, I... I likely would have run. But... In spite of everything, it's just good to see you again. I'm sorry that it was bad news that brought you here, but <laughs> that's just the way things go. So. She walks up to him and kisses him. I imagine her crackling skin cracks slightly under the cold. Very unfortunate. However, you know the offer still stands. You know I won't take it. Well, the girl can always hope. Take Lark to Brazil. Forgive Francis. Desperation. And Leon, well... I just hope he knows exactly who he's running with these days. That man's an enigma wrapped in a question mark. 
think one day, just one day, we might have an idea who he is. Until then, who knows? She begins to walk back, getting closer to a door. I'll be protecting your dreams for now. Just be careful. It just, this doesn't feel like it's over. It feels like it's just beginning. You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Changeling the Lost 2nd Edition. Once more, Into the Hedge, part of the Domain Gaming's Contagion Anthology, written and told by Wyvarian. A special thanks to you, the listener, and if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. And as always, comments are welcomed. Until the next chapter, don't stop asking yourself, how do you find the lost beauty in the agony of this life?